Hello, I'm Dr Stephanie Bloomer and this video is brought to you by the Society of Radiological Protection and today we're talking about contamination control in the context of radiation protection. Welcome to my kitchen table and what we've got here is a pretend bottle of radioactive material. It's actually just some powder, not radioactive material. Now, depending on what radioactive material we're imagining is inside the bottle, the actual radiation may or may not be able to penetrate the plastic of the bottle. For example, if the material were gamma emitting, then the gamma rays would be able to penetrate through the plastic of the bottle and all of this surrounding area would be experiencing gamma rays coming out of the bottle. However, if we imagine that the material inside the bottle is alpha emitting, then the comparatively slower and heavier alpha particles wouldn't be able to penetrate the plastic of the bottle. So this bottle would be a suitable container for the alpha emitting radioactive material. There are many useful properties of radioactive material that are harnessed by nuclear energy, industry, medicine and in the course of using this material we may create some contamination for example if in my pretend radiochemistry lab i want to transfer some of my material into the beaker now the first thing that i would do is before i've opened the bottle i would set up the area making sure there's nothing in the area that I don't want to have the potential to become contaminated. So I'd remove any unwanted items from the area. I'd also put up signage, letting everybody know that there's a potential for contamination in this area, so people are aware of it. Now, if I start doing my pretend radiochemistry, if I take some of my material and put it in my chemistry beaker. Oh, a bit of a clumsy person. Now, some of my material that I wanted in my beaker has fallen onto my work surface. And this is what we call contamination. It's the radioactive material in a place where we don't want it to be. The intended place was here but now we've contaminated this work surface. So the next thing we're going to do is I'm going to lower the light levels a little bit because we're going to look at some gloves, personal protective equipment. And we're going to look at how effective wearing gloves can be at preventing the spread of this contamination. I've got a little black light torch here to help us see the contamination. So if you look at my hand at the moment, tiny spot there. There we go. I've just uh, gone and contaminated that hand there. So with my other hand which has been reasonably clean because it's been holding the torch. That one. That's a glove on. Expose that one to some of this simulant. Get it all rubbed up there. Obviously normally in real life you wouldn't be just throwing radioactive powder into your hand. But you might get your hand contaminated as a consequence of just going about your work if you're working under such conditions so there we go so this time the contamination's not on my actual skin I've not got any on the back of the glove there yeah, so the contamination's not on my skin it's just on the protective glove now let's remove the glove So how well is the glove protect me, 
protected me from the contamination. Not a hundred percent because of my sloppy glove removal technique. See? Simulant lighting up on my hands there. So although I was wearing a glove and my hand was clean before, sloppy glove removal, I might as well have not been wearing a glove in the first place. So let's go over to the sink. Hands wet. I admit I'm not an expert in hand washing. This is just uh, following the, the old lockdown advice. Palm of the hands, back of the hands, between the fingers. with my tap handle. Touched it before, didn't I? Oh. Dry my hands off. Let's take a look at that tap handle. Look at the tap handle also. I suspect my um, torch is probably a bit contaminated with the pretend simulant. <laughs> make it out there. It's a bit difficult in the daylight but the uh, simulated contamination is spread onto the tap handle. I've touched. Oh, my hand's doing. Taken back over into the darker corner of the uh, chemistry lab. my contaminated torch a bit. It's still a bit damp. But the point I was trying to demonstrate is the fact that it's all very well wearing the gloves, but unless you've got absolutely perfect glove removal technique, you're still very much going to have contamination on the inside of your gloves which needs to then be addressed by a good hand washing after removal of the gloves. <laughs>